Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and I'm going to do a kind of review of just basic plain journals. So I have several um, here of different brands, and I didn't realize the variety that I actually had on hand until I was looking for one to just do basic everyday journaling in. So I just want to kind of share the differences and the similarities between the different journals that I actually have. Um, this journal is from Michaels. It is a dot grid journal. It measures six, let's see, that's six by eight. It has white paper. I use it for my planner spreads. It isn't the best quality paper. I would estimate that it may be 24 pound paper. I'm not sure. I haven't done any pen test in this. For the most part, I've just done my from scratch planner spreads using a variety of different pens. It does shadow a little bit but so far I haven't had any bleeding with um, just typical gel ink um, let's see I use the Pilot G2 usually when I'm um, planning so so far so good um, I've also noticed that I can use first as far as stamping goes I can't use my regular dye ink I've used um, chalk ink and it does shadow a little bit but again it does not bleed through also even though the pages are not numbered they're just plain pages there is an index space in the front of the book and what it's four pages worth of index space so what I did I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to use this when I started using it as a planner I just left a few extra pages for my index space. It does not have a pocket in the back. So I'm just sticking things in there to use later. But that is the Michaels Journal. They do have other colors, of course. They have lined, blank, and grid options available also. And they are, if I remember correctly, $5.00. And I'm not sure how well this spine is going to hold up um, through the year. I mean, I've only done a few weeks, and as you can see, it's kind of bulking up a little bit from the washi tape and the stickers that I use. Oh, and also, it does have two ribbon bookmarks. So, but this is the Michaels one. The elastic here is not the best quality it's a little flimsy to me okay so moving on on this is a pink loistrum 1917 and as far as the size it pretty much compares uh, equally to the size of the Michaels journal it's about a quarter of an inch taller and maybe a quarter of an inch narrower but they do compare in size. So here's how you spell it. Loistrum is how it's pronounced. Loistrum 1917. And this is a sheet of labels that you can use with it. It comes with it. It also has a pocket in the back. Here, I, I always keep all the information that comes with the journals. So here is the book with the journal, the card that came with the journal, everything. So, but it does have a pocket the only thing about this is that it's like a cream colored paper and I prefer a white paper which is why I like the Michaels journal this journal is numbered is again dot grid I like dot grid so but the pages are numbered there's 249 gridded pages I have used this I, thought I was going to be bullet journaling but I figured out that kind of what I already do is a form of bullet journaling and I just I just thought it was a little 
overkill for me. I didn't need to do it twice, basically. Anyway, this one does come with an index as well. And it's actually more labeled than the Michaels index. This one is three a three-page index. It does give you a place for your name and address. And yeah, uh, the paper quality. Um, I did quite a lot of layering on this uh, illustration. So I knew there was going to be some bleed through. The paper quality is really, it feels basically the same as the Michaels paper. Um, this might be slightly better quality. But as far as the weight of the paper, it feels pretty much the same. Um, the elastic is a better quality. It does have the two bookmarks also. So also the cover on the Loistrom 1917 feels like a better quality um, than the one on the Michaels. It's, it seems like it's also put together a little better. Um, I'm pretty sure I would have the same problem with the spine separating with the Loistrum eventually, but it is another option. Now let's move on to these. This is, I'm going to start with the low, lower uh, end version first. This is Exceed. I thought I had one that was already open and slightly used, but this is a journal from Walmart. And it's five by eight and a quarter, 120 sheets. And it's exceed. Of course, I got the dotted. <laughs> um, it does have the pocket in the back. As you can see here. Again, it has this creamy colored paper. Um, I think this is even more yellowish or creamier than the Loistrum it is so it only has the one um, ooh, and it was stuck to the paper it only has one ribbon mark page mark and it's not really ribbon I don't know what this is so it's not as nice the paper though is well I don't know. The paper is slightly uh, it's not as good of a quality actually as the Loistrum. At first it felt like it was heavier but I think it's probably it actually is a little heavier than the Michaels paper also. And again, it's dot grid, no numbered pages. Has a place for your name on the in the front, but it does not have an index in the front. So it's just a basic plain journal. This is a Moleskine. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm sure somebody will let me know if I'm not. But this is a Moleskine, and it is the same size as the Exceed. The Moleskine has the cream colored paper. We can compare. Compare. However, this Moleskine is not just a standard. It has heavier weight paper. I use this as my art journal. Oop which I need to do something to seal this page so it won't stick together. But I'm using this as an art journal, so it has heavier paper. This is where I'm starting on my next page. Um, so for my art journal, it doesn't really matter about the color of the paper, that it's not a pure white. Let's close this, it's driving me nuts. Um, the Moleskine, Here's the paper, the book that comes with it. Here is the packaging. It is for art. It's a sketchbook. It's They also have another one, I think, that is for watercolor. 
um, but I picked this one up in Target. They're around twenty dollars. And here's the back. Oh, the paper is one hundred and eleven pound. So, one hundred and four pages, one hundred and eleven pound acid-free paper. So there's that. And so this is. I, I do like journals that have decorative covers and all of that, but I guess I'm just pretty basic. Um, when I purchased this, I thought that pink was my everything, but even though I love pink, I like my planners just to be a basic black, and I guess I like that in my journals as well. So I hope that gave you some information about the differences between the different brands of journals there are even more than this there's stalogy i haven't tried that one yet but when i do i will definitely come on and share what i share my thoughts about it but for the purposes that i'm using these for they work great they're all different price points um but the quality is not that different and I guess it just depends on what you want to use it for so anyway I hope that was somewhat helpful if you have any questions or comments please leave them below if you like this type of video please give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please click the subscribe button and click the little bell so that you'll receive notifications each time I upload a new video thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later bye I'm popping back on just to do the lay flat, I'll do a little lay flat challenge to see which one lays flat the best. So far, Exceed is not cooperating even though I've bent the spine back a couple of times. I haven't used the Loistrum much, but it lays, has a nicer flat lay than any of the other ones. So does the, I have to give it to the Michaels one, it lays flat nicely too and definitely the mold scheme does as well so the higher ends lay fat flat easily michael's i remember i think i had to work with it a little bit but it lays flat nicely as well the exceed as you can see it does not lay <laughs> flat but that's okay it'll make a great everyday journal again thanks for watching bye